everyone. It's Sydney Sidwell, the Debate Mom, and I am here in episode four to show you, to talk to you about what is public forum debate, what a round looks like, etc. Coaches, one thing I would probably do before you show this episode is to actually look online for public forum rounds uh, and show one to your kids. Make sure it's not too fast. Sometimes at those upper levels, they'll go kind of fast. At nationals, they usually slow down and have a really good round. The reason why is a lot of times I see varsities jump in the way that I'm gonna jump in here and talk about what a round is, but not really show one. So the kids are super confused. They're like writing cases, but they don't know how they're gonna use them and that sort of thing. So what I would do right now is probably show them a public forum round, have a varsity flow on the board stop after each speech, make sure the kids are keeping up, but that way you can keep referring back to the round that they saw. And that's how I teach public forum. And whenever I forget to show that round, I regret it a lot later, just because it really does make sense to the kids and they realize it's not as tough as they think it's going to be. All right? Okay, now that you have seen a public forum round, this is the way it goes. So go ahead and take some notes. Here we go. What is in a public forum round? Well, first of all, there is a flip of the coin. Okay. So when you walk into a debate round in public forum, you don't know whether you're affirmative or negative. You could be either, which is why, of course, you prepare both sides equally well and that you are awesome on both sides, okay? Um, so please do come with a coin to a tournament uh, and then ask the judge if that's okay. They can flip the coin, usually the other people call it, and whoever wins can pick pro or con, or they can pick first or second speaker. So in policy debate and in Lincoln-Douglas debate, affirmative always begins. In public forum, that is not the case, all right? Uh, today, as I go through a round, though, I will pretend that pro is first and con is second, but just know that could totally be flipped on its, uh, on its head, okay? But please talk to your partner before you walk in a round. What are you going to decide to take um, if you win the coin flip, all right? Uh, and one thing I would say is if the other people choose pro or con, pick second speaker always. Okay, always pick second speaker. You'll see why as we go through here, but you end up getting the, what, the last word and you want the last word, right, with the judge. All right, so here we go. Once you do that, the affirmative or the negative stands up and they give a four minute case. This is just reading the case. All right, so with that, you're gonna make sure that you have the resolution, definitions, a resolutional analysis. You're gonna have at least three contentions uh, and you're gonna have some great evidence to back you up and you're gonna make sure to read the source and the date. When the timer goes off, again, you have a few seconds to like stop, but as I say when I'm judging, I'm not really judging anything that happens after that. But if you're gonna end up saying, so, please vote for pro, you know, that's no big deal. All right, next up, and of course the con is flowing during this time because that's stupid not to flow, <laughs> okay? All right, con now stands up. They're gonna read their case for four minutes. And that's all that happens with those first two speeches. So again, in public forum, you're gonna to have to end up choosing which partner will be first speaker, which partner will be second speaker, all right? So this is first pro and first con. Because in public forum, you always have a partner. Um, someone might be good on their feet, might want to be second speaker. Uh, that's usually what I see is some people are just so great at presenting the case in a beautiful way, and that's why they're a first speaker. Yeah, you guys will figure it out, all right? But if someone wants to take a chance at being second speaker, dang well, partners, give them a shot, all right? Okay, next up, 
there is something called crossfire. Okay, this is also called cross X or cross examination. This goes on for three minutes. All right, so the official rules actually do say public forum is called you know, it's called Crossfire, but we always put the two together all the time. Um, and that's why I'm telling you all, you know, all that it could be named. All right. So during that time period, uh, the two opponents stand up and please do stand up. I, as a judge, I think it's really disrespectful to remain sitting. Um, and they'll say, do you want to stand or sit? And I'm just telling you as a judge, I find it very, more respectful to stand up. Not to mention, if your opponent is sitting down and you're standing, you already have the advantage because you look taller, you are looking the judge in the eyeball, not the whole time, that'll freak him out, but you're having that conversation with the judge and that will put you ahead already. Now, during this time period, um, usually someone says, do you mind if I have the first question? What I've noticed is back east and at nationals, uh, whoever was first speaker will get the first question. However, um, I do see it a lot of tournaments where it's sort of like anything goes, <laughs> okay? So you do want to say, do you mind if I have the first question? Jump in there. Don't be a jerk about it. Uh, all right. So at this point, you go back and forth, okay? Make sure the other people are allowed to get a question in as well. Go ahead, take apart their case. Ask for any cards or pieces of evidence that you or your partner want to see. Uh, make sure that you clarify what their case is. If you don't understand it, dang well, you better ask some good questions. Don't let them keep going on, but be polite and kind. A lot of judges hate angry people. <laughs> they hate personal attacks. Don't do it. Um, what I usually say when I'm judging, they'll say, do you mind aggression? And I will say, this is for me, and I will say, I don't mind passion, but I hate rudeness, right? So if someone says, do you mind if I have the first question? And you say, you just did. Like that's rude and stupid and I don't like you as a judge, right? I'm like looking at you going, what are you doing? That's just dumb. So just think of yourself more as a lawyer. You're presenting yourself very professionally. The more rude you are, the more the judge is not liking you at all. Okay, and I'm just saying that from experience. All right, so once you've clarified, once you've kind of taken apart the case or asked any tricky questions that you've thought of ahead of time, um, the cross-examination period is over and off you go, right? So make sure you get any evidence to the opponents that the opponents wanted to see. And then at this point, it's going to be the second speaker for Crow, all right? Uh, second speaker for pro is going to, during this time period of four minutes, only attack opponent's case. All right, so a lot of second speakers want to be first speaker in the round uh, because they get that four minutes. But again, I still say it's not smart to be first speaker. If you, if you have a shot at it, go for second speaker. So you're attacking the opponent's case. You're telling the judge exactly where you are on the flow. So with that, you would say, what I'm doing during this is an off-time roadmap. I will be just attacking the negative case. Now, let's go to their definition of this word. That, my definition is better because of this and this. Resolutional analysis, this is actually abusive. You can see that the pro can't even win with this resolutional analysis. It should be pretty fair on both sides, so let's look to mine. Let's go to their first contention. Their claim was this, but when looking at the evidence, the evidence actually didn't say that. Uh, it actually said this, or like, this piece of evidence is very old, or whatever. Um, I'll talk more about blocks uh, blocks are just like attacks to the opponent ca opponent's case, how to write them, and all the different things that you can use. Remember, you can always cross-apply your case. And whenever we are just starting to debate a new topic within uh, the classroom and we don't have any blocks that we've written yet, 
Usually we just use our cases and cross apply our cases all the time. So if you look at my second point, cross apply my second point, you can see this takes out their point because of blank, blank, blank. Okay? Watch the timer carefully. Don't say something, re say it, re say it again, and re say it again. The time will go by before you even know it. Okay? So make sure you're being short and concise. Um, unless you don't have a lot to say, okay? But again, Pro has a ton of time here. So before Pro, this second speaker gets up to speak, one thing I usually tell him to do, there's two minutes of prep time for each team during the entire round, okay? I use some of that prep time here, usually like only, so they get two minutes for the whole time. <laughs> so with that, I would use like one minute here, okay? Make sure that you know what you're going to say to your opponent's case before you get up. Kind of think about it, but watch your time. You do not want to use all of the prep time here and leave your, your partner so that they have nothing, right? Have no time. The uh, round's going to go on for a while, all right? And do talk to your partner. Get along with your partner. Be kind to your partner. I have had debaters that are really rude to partners and I can't keep a partner with them because they're rude. Listen to your partner and be really respectful of them. All right, so they just attacked the opponent's case. Now the second speaker for Khan is gonna get up for four minutes. And again, I would take notes on all this so that you know what happens in each speech. For this speech, they are going to attack opponent's case, but they also have to leave some time to come back and defend their own case. Okay? Because if they don't do it here, they can't really do it later uh, because then it's past the constructive speeches. So these speeches right here are called constructive speeches. All right, there's only certain times that you can bring up new arguments and the constructive speeches are the times that you can do new arguments. You do not want to be abusive and bring up like brand new arguments later on in the, in the debate. All right, so once you've gone through this, it is cross X or cross fire between these two. So this cross fire is between these two. This cross fire is between these two. And that goes on for three minutes, okay? And again, prep time. I would use prep time here before this speech. Okay, so these are the constructive speeches. Now we're going to move on to the rebuttal speeches. Sometimes these are called rebuttal speeches and then you have summary. Yeah, let's call them summary, all right? <laughs> these are constructive speeches um, and then these are the summary speeches. So at this point we have first pro get up. The person who read the case is now gonna get up to do their summary speech. So with the summary speech, a few things. You can see that Pro has not defended attacks to their own case yet. Ah, right, so again, being first speaker is tough because you're putting on this person, they have to defend their case. So with this, they would still be allowed new arguments if they want. Um, but once they like go over the round, there shouldn't be like brand new arguments. All right, so they defend their case and then go over the main issues of the round. And I will have a whole thing just on summary speeches on how to do that to kind of have a template so that you know what to do. Because this can be a difficult speech. It really can be tough. Because this is only two minutes long. All right. Then first Khan gets up. They also have two minutes. 
for the summary speech. <laughs> summary speech. So in the summary speech for this one, they're going to go over the main issues of the round. So again, they're going over the main issues of the round, showing why they win or showing why they're winning. And so does this one. When you go over the main issues of the round, you talk about why your site is winning. Okay? And again, I'm going to go through that more later. Just the summary speeches. Okay, next up, we have a grand crossfire. This is three minutes. You will be sitting down. I know that I went through a whole thing at the beginning that always stand up, but there's actually a rule because there's some sort of urban legend <laughs> that in a final round at nationals when public forum first came up, someone stabbed someone in the neck with a pencil. It got so heated. So uh, I don't know if that's true, but there you go. Just make sure that everyone is sitting down during this time period. You're still looking at the judge. Uh, make sure that everybody gets a chance to ask questions. Don't be rude. Take over and let your partner just sit there quietly. Or as I've seen, like one partner is very bossy and they keep on shutting out their, their partner. Looks really bad. Make sure your partner gets time to also ask questions. If you are the second speaker, you may want to get your questions in early on because then you can start working on your final speech. This is kind of a good time to do that, um, unless there are really important things like that you do need to get out there. But just make sure that everybody is asking questions here. All right, so three minutes back and forth. Don't be rude. Uh, I can always tell novice debaters or brand new debaters because they get really rude and sassy. <laughs> Okay, the best debaters are classy. Best debaters are classy. Remember that. All right, and last, we have the second pro stand up, the one who did this speech, and they are going to do something called final focus. All right, in final focus, you are going over the main issues of the round. You're actually going to tell the judge, I'm going to go over voting issues that is also called voters i will be going through voters in the round and with that you're going to do a little something called impact calculus oh if i can spell it calculus which sounds super scary but it's not scary at all i am bad at math Impact calculus just basically says, let's look at the impacts and I'll show you that by voting for us, you have better impacts than the other side, right? Looking to the two. So make sure you're going through voting issues uh, or voters that you're not just focused on your own. You should be comparing your case with their case. You should be making sure you don't ignore the biggest arguments of the round which I've seen, you know, debaters do. They're like, oh, that's a scary, I'll just, I'll just pretend it didn't happen. Um, but really, do not ignore your beautiful case at the beginning. Uh, the other danger that I've seen with this is that they don't include in the voting issues a great argument that the other side had nothing really to say to. Like, I would end with that. I would be like, circle and star this argument because they had nothing to say to it. We can win on this alone. And if you don't think about your case, you're gonna ignore that. You're gonna get caught up in whatever arguments they had um, and ignore your case. So I actually tell my kids, pre-write like one minute of those voters, even if you kind of change it later, but that way you will not forget how beautiful your case is. All right, because I've seen people drop their entire case during this time period. All right, and again, no new arguments from here. No new arguments. Okay, so what, am, what do I mean by new arguments? Like 
if you have the last word and suddenly you're like, oh, and I just thought of this great argument, that is unfair, that is wrong. That should only happen in constructive speeches. And I've seen a lot of debaters throw those in and some brand new lay judges don't know better and they'll vote on that brand new argument. So some of you may be thinking, well, I could probably get away with that, but that's wrong and bad and unethical and I try and train all my judges that that is wrong and bad and unethical um, and that you shouldn't, <coughs> you shouldn't vote for someone who's doing that. Actually, I tell them, don't vote them down for doing that, but you should not consider that brand new argument uh, because it's unethical and wrong, just like making up evidence is wrong, okay? All right, oh, and by the way, before I forget, impact calculus Nico Pedersen has a great video on impact calculus. It's like five minutes long and it is on debateclash.com. And I would absolutely show that video and make kids take notes. If you understand impact calculus, you will win the round because impacts win, not just vague, you know, arguments. Impacts win around period, okay? All right, let's go to second con. And they're also doing final focus and they are doing the same thing, okay? Here's the benefit of having the last word. You could go through the voters that they just presented and show how you already took all those down. No new arguments, but you can show how like their voters go away. Um, like I would only spend a minute on this because you really want to focus on why you win but show how that you've taken all that out already. Like you've taken those down. So let's go to the reasons why Khan should win the round today. First, right, and it's always good to number it. It's always good to be organized and don't go crazy. So flowing wise on these speeches here, um, I'll show you kind of how I flow those but really, I'm not making arrows really much anymore unless they're telling me to, unless they're going over the flow. Um, I'm just focusing on these main issues, all right? So that is how a public forum debate round works and what you're supposed to do in each of those speeches, okay? Well, good luck. I hope it all works out for you. I will be doing um, some, some more videos on summary speeches and final focus. Go watch that impact calculus video by uh, Nico Pedersen because it is beautiful and awesome. All right, this is Sid signing off. Thanks.